Uh, okay, so again, uh, this is the skull. Uh, so uh, these are the facial bones, and uh, again, the cranial bones here. Uh, so uh, the frontal bone forms the uh, upper part uh, of the facial skeleton. Uh, the uh, maxillary bone and also uh, the zygomatic bones uh, form most of the middle part of the facial skeleton and of course the mandible forming the lower part of the facial uh, skeleton. Uh, talking about the sutures uh, of the skull, uh, this is called the uh, uh, coronal uh, suture uh, on the coronal plate and uh, this is the sagittal suture, of course on the sagittal plate, sagittal suture. Uh, the intersection between these two sutures uh, is called um, the uh, brigma. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, the frontal bone um, is separated from the two uh, parietal bones by the coronal suture. Uh, the two parietal bones are separated uh, by the sagittal suture. And then here uh, we have got the lambdoid suture. This is the lambdoid suture. And again, uh, this on the right side. Uh, so the uh, two parietal bones are separated from the occipital bone by the lambdoid suture. And uh, this intersection between the lambdoid suture and the sagittal suture is called the lambda. Uh, this suture uh, is called the occipitomastoid suture. Uh, in the child, in the uh, position of the brigma, we've got the anterior fontanelle. In the position of the lambda, we've got the posterior fontanelle. And here, we've got the sphenoidal fontanelle. Here, we've got the mastoid fontanelle. And this is the uh, sequamous suture, because it's close to the squamous part of the temporal bone. Uh, now, talking about parts uh, of some of the bones uh, of the skull. Uh, so, beginning with the uh, temporal bone. This is the temporal bone. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, the large squamous part. Uh, the large squamous part uh, and again from the internal again this is the squamous part uh, of the temporal bone and uh, here um, th this is the um, zygomatic process of the temporal bone and here this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone together forming the zygomatic arch so if there's a spot on this we'd say that this is the zygomatic arch uh, okay, so other parts, uh, this is the mastoid process or mastoid part. Uh, this is the styloid process, styloid process. Uh, some references call this the tympanic process, uh, this. But it's not very important, tympanic process. This is, of course, the external acoustic meatus. Uh, so the article would be here, kind of. Uh, okay, so... Uh, and of course, this is the petrous part. This is the petrous part, petrous part of the temporal bone. In the petrous part, we've got the internal acoustic meatus. Internal acoustic meatus. Uh, okay. So uh, this is the superior temporal line and the inferior temporal line. Um, they originate as a single ridge. Uh, from the posterior margin uh, of the uh, zygomatic process of the frontal bone. This is the simple ridge, but then it will diverge into the superior temporal line and inferior temporal line as it goes backwards. And by the way, uh, these two lines actually pass over the frontal bone, the parietal, and also the temporal bones, okay? Uh, so, uh, we give them the name temporal line, it doesn't mean that it uh, goes over the temporal bone only, but it actually passes over these three bones. Uh, so the superior temporal line, as we said, provides uh, attachment for the temporal fascia. The inferior one provides uh, attachment uh, for the temporalis muscle. Uh, below the inferior temporal line, uh, we've got the temporal fossa. Okay, it's this fossa here. This is all the temporal fossa. Uh, this. This is the infratemporal um, crest of the greater ring of the sphenoid. See, this is greater ring of the sphenoid, and uh, this is the infratemporal crest. Uh, below this, uh, we have the infratemporal fossa. Okay, so 
this is the infratemporal fossa. So this is the temporal fossa, and this is the infratemporal fossa. Boundaries of the temporal fossa. Superiorly, we have the temporal lines, which are two in number, the superior and inferior temporal lines. Um, inferiorly, we've got lateral and medial boundaries. The lateral boundary uh, formed by the zygomatic arch and the medial boundary formed by the infratemporal crest here. Infratemporal crest at the greater wing of the sphenoid. Okay, and uh, anteriorly, um, it is formed by the uh, zygomatic process of the frontal bone and the frontal process of the zygomatic bone and also a small part of the maxilla. Posteriorly, the boundary is formed by posterior aspect of the temporal lines. Finally, uh, the temporal fossa has got a, a roof and a floor. The floor is formed by four bones, a frontal bone, parietal bone, a sphenoid bone, and temporal bone, which together form the important landmark, which is called the tyrion. Uh, the roof, however, uh, is formed by the temporal fascia. Uh, so, uh, this is a very important launch mark um, in the skull. This is called the tyrion. Uh, so, uh, this is formed uh, by the um, articulation uh, between the greater wing of the sphenoid uh, and the anterior inferior angle of the parietal bone. Uh, this is what our theory says. However, in practice, we are told that uh, it is this H-shaped um, launch mark uh, formed uh, by the articulation between the a uh, greater wing of the sphenoid, the parietal, the frontal, and also the temporal bones. Uh, okay, but so let's say that this is the tyrion. Uh, why is this important? Because uh, beneath this from the inside, so see, beneath this from the inside, uh, actually you can see that better here maybe. Uh, okay, so uh, beneath this from the inside uh, is the uh, anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery. So uh, this is uh, the uh, grooves or impressions uh, for the uh, middle meningeal vessels. Uh, about contents of the uh, temporal fossa, uh, we have the temporalis muscle, uh, we have its nerve and arterial supply, uh, which are the deep uh, temporal nerve and deep temporal artery. The deep temporal nerve uh, from uh, the uh, mandibular division of the trigeminal from uh, specifically its anterior division and uh, the deep uh, temporal artery from the uh, maxillary artery uh, and we also have the zygomaticotemporal nerve as a content of the fossa uh, talking about boundaries of the infratemporal fossa uh, this is the infratemporal uh, fossa uh, here Okay, so uh, medially we've got the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid, uh, the pterygomaxillary fissure, and also the pharynx. Laterally, here, we've got the medial surface of the ramus of the mandible, and also the coronoid process. Posteriorly, we've got the styloid process of the temporal bone and also head of the mandible or it's also called condylar process of the mandible. Anteriorly, we have the posterior aspect or infratemporal aspect of the maxilla. Superiorly, or the roof of the infratemporal fossa is formed by infratemporal surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid, pierced by foramen ovale and foramen spinosum. The infratemporal fossa has got no anatomical floor. So, uh, talking about uh, parts of the sphenoid, uh, this is the bat shaped. Uh, sphenoid bone. Uh, this is its body. This along with this 
is the body. Uh, this is the lesser ring, and uh, this is the greater ring. Greater ring. We can also see the greater ring from the outside, of course. This is the greater ring of the sphenoid. Uh, we have some cavities uh, in the skull. Uh, this is the cranial cavity. Uh, these are the orbital cavities, the nasal cavity, and also the oral cavity. Now, talking about uh, the uh, orbital cavity, uh, this is the uh, orbital margin. Um, this is the supraorbital margin uh, formed um, by the frontal bone. Uh, this is the uh, infraorbital margin formed uh, mostly by the maxilla maxillary bone and also uh, a little part of it by the zygomatic bone. Uh, okay, and then the lateral side uh, of the margin is formed uh, by the uh, zygomatic process of the frontal bone and the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. The medial side of the orbital margin, which is actually formed uh, by the um, frontal process of the maxillary bone and the uh, maxillary process of the frontal bone. Uh, okay, and then talking about the walls uh, of the cavity, uh, the roof uh, is formed again uh, by the orbital plate uh, of the frontal bone uh, and the uh, floor uh, is majorly formed by the maxillary bone uh, and the uh, lateral wall is formed by the zygomatic bone um, and also a greater ring of the sphenoid. Okay? So uh, this is greater ring of the sphenoid and then as for the medial uh, wall, the medial wall is formed um, by the uh, frontal process of the maxillary bone, uh, the lacrimal bone, uh, the ethmoid bone, um, I think it's called the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone, and also a, uh, a small part of the body of the uh, sphenoid bone. Uh, the maxillary bone forms the roof of the oral cavity and floor of the orbital cavities. Uh, the maxilla bone uh, has got a large body and four processes. Uh, frontal process, uh, zygomatic process, uh, alveolar uh, process, and also palatine process. Uh, the uh, alveolar processes of both maxillae form an arch which is called the uh, we can call it the superior or the upper alveolar arch for holding the upper or um, maxillary teeth. Uh, the mandible also has got uh, the alveolar uh, process uh, which again forms an arch. Uh, we can call it the inferior or the lower alveolar arch for holding the lower or the mandibular teeth. Uh, on the zygomatic bone, uh, we've got the zygomaticofacial uh, foramen, uh, and again here, uh, zygomaticofacial foramen, uh, and we also do have uh, the uh, zygomaticotemporal foramen here, uh, zygomaticotemporal foramen, but it's, it has not been marked here. Uh, but uh, these two foramina are for the passage of the zygomaticofacial nerve and uh, zygomaticotemporal nerve. Um, this is the anterior nasal aperture, also called the piriform aperture. Uh, okay, so the aperture is only this outline. Uh, these are the nasal cavities, okay, the right and left nasal cavities. Uh, but the outline is called the anterior nasal aperture, which is formed uh, by the lower border uh, of the nasal bones and also the maxillae bones. Uh, posteriorly, uh, we've got the posterior nasal aperture. Okay, so again, uh, what we mean by the posterior nasal aperture is only the outline uh, of the bones. Uh, and they are also called coenae. Okay, they are two in number, right and left coenae. Uh, so they are bounded superiorly by a uh, body of the sphenoid, uh, laterally by uh, medial pterygoid plates of the sphenoid, inferiorly by the palatine bones, and they are separated from each other by posterior margin of the vomer. 
but it's important to know that uh, only the posterior nasal aperture is called cone. The anterior nasal aperture is called piriform aperture. Uh, now talking about some foramina in the skull. Um, this is the supraorbital notch, which will lead to the supraorbital foramen. This is the uh, infraorbital foramen. Um, and then this is the mental foramen. Uh, and we can quite notice that uh, these three foramina are on the same line, same vertical line. Uh, this is the supraorbital notch, uh, because it's a notch, right? But this is the supraorbital foramen. Uh, so, uh, normally this shouldn't be like that in a normal person. Uh, in a normal person, either both of them is uh, a notch or a foramen. But uh, this is for um, teaching purposes only. So, it's Im important to know that sometimes uh, it comes in the form of a notch, sometimes as a foramen. So uh, these are the superciliary uh, arches or ridges, superciliary arches, uh, and they, uh, they unite at the glabella. This is the glabella, uh, and this is the nasion. Okay. These are the superciliary ridges. Uh, beneath to them uh, lie the uh, frontal air sinuses, okay, frontal air sinuses, they lie within the frontal bone um, and uh, below the infraorbital foramen uh, lie uh, within the maxillary bones uh, the maxillary air sinuses and uh, within the uh, sphenoid bone uh, lie the two uh, sphenoidal air sinuses this is the optic canal uh, in the lesser ring of the sphenoid uh, this is the superior orbital fissure um, lying between the lesser wing and greater wing uh, of the sphenoid. And then this is the infraorbital fissure or actually inferior orbital fissure uh, lying between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the maxillary bone. And here again, uh, this is the uh, inferior orbital fissure, it's a horizontal fissure. Uh, and then here, uh, this is the uh, pterygo maxillary fissure between the pterygoid plate uh, of the sphenoid and back of the maxilla. We've got uh, this fissure, which is called the pterygo maxillary fissure. Um, okay, so this leads uh, medially, this fissure leads medially into the pterygo palatine fossa. Uh, so if you can focus here. Uh, this is the pterygo palatine fossa. Uh, this is the palatine bone, and this is the pterygoid plate. So this is the pterygo palatine fossa. Pterygo palatine fossa. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, this is. Uh, this is the pterygo uh, palatine fossa uh, and this is the foramen rotundum which will lead to that fossa that's it so this is the palatine bone this is the pterygoid plate and this is the pterygo palatine fossa and this is the foramen rotundum